Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Baptist Assembly. We're so glad to have you here today. Nice group. Uh, if you look at your worship folder, you will notice a communication card uh, in your folder. If you have not been here before, please give us as much information as you feel comfortable giving us. On the back of the card, you will find a place to make prayer requests and or any comments that you would like us to be aware of. Please place the card in an offering plate, either here or back there, and uh, near one of the exits that you leave. Uh, right now, I'd like to call on Kay to tell you some exciting news about Vacation Bible School. Good morning. I love VBS. <laughs> and you should too. Because the purpose of VBS is to lead kids, teenagers, oh, thank you, and adults to know Jesus or know Him better. It's our chance to pull kids and families in from the community and give our own kids a fresh new look at Jesus because it all looks different during the week of vacation Bible school. We have advertised through this campus, through the Jubilee School, through our thrift store, through our food pantry, through our Tuesday night meal, and the banner posted across the street. I need you to be praying very specifically today and tomorrow that God will use our efforts and bring kids and teens and families here this week to hear His Word. This year we're going to do a game theme. It's called Twists and Turns. Following Jesus changes the game. Is that not so? I hope it's so in your life. Look around. I don't know how many people we have today, but I have 40 volunteers ready to go this week. I'd say that's about 50% of us. That's pretty good odds. Pretty good odds. And out of that, in addition to that 50, uh, I have some other people who have just supported by, by giving some money that we can use for things. I have about 10 people who have provided all kinds of cookies for us to use this year. So the volunteers are going to be working games at our block party tomorrow night where we are hoping to pull some people in and then encourage them to stay for the rest of the week where we will be teaching God's Word through Bible study, through crafts, through music, through rec. I hope you've been using your prayer card. If you don't have one, there are some out in the hallway on a couple of different hallways. I don't have it. I mean, tables. You'll have to get your own dice. Some mornings I didn't have a dice. I just told Sammy to pick a number. <laughs> That's what we prayed for. Um, please be praying. If you don't have a card when you go out there, just pray. Pray this week um, for students, for kids, for students. We go all the way through a youth through middle school with classes. And we have an adult class. Uh, please pray that my volunteers stay healthy and well this week. Please pray that a hedge of protection surrounds this church this week and all that we do. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. And we commit to serve you this week with all that we have. Father, I just ask that you bless the efforts of the people of this church. Lord, you know who needs to come. You know who's gotten the information. Just give them some reminding of our event and bring them tomorrow. Bring them out of the heat and into our air-conditioned building for a few hours each evening. Thank you for the privilege of serving you through... Uh, Vacation Bible School this week. I ask that you bless this this uh, service today, our praise, our worship, and the word that Daniel's going to bring. I pray all these things in your name. Amen.
praise this morning, church. My prayer is that you came today. Oh. No? No? Okay. Brother, my prayer today is that you came with an expectation. An expectation with an open heart and an open mind to receive that which the Lord is saying to the church today. To each of us, I pray that this would feed you, excite you, challenge you, and haunt you today. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence this morning. I thank you for the conviction upon my heart with the Holy Spirit, Lord, to put myself and my rationality aside, Lord, that I might be a vessel for your word, for your truth, for your promises, for your instruction, Lord, not just for my life, but for the lives of the church, Lord. In this, your precious name we pray. Amen. We the kingdom, 1 Corinthians 2 9. Just in case, there it is. However, as what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind can or has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love Him, for those who seek Him for those who endeavor to carry their cross. Christians, brethren, church, the Lord is addressing us directly here, directly, a challenge to do the impossible, to portray a heavenly Father of love, power, grace, and mercy, endless, <clears throat> deep as it is wide, and east to west without limits, without comparison, to believe upon this, that the things God has for us are beyond comparison, beyond explicability for the church to go forth and believe this in a world of darkness, turmoil, doubt, fear, division, disunity, and disheartening. All around us these things are. All around us we see them, we hear them, we experience them in our very own lives, even in our own home. But I'm going to tell you what the Lord has to say about such opposition, about such doubt to His people today. Isaiah 43 reads this way. A voice of one is calling out. Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Remove obstacles. Make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Calling us to make a highway of holiness, forgiveness, mercy and grace, understanding and enlightenment the world is not familiar with. This is the wilderness. The wilderness, the obstacles, those things which come against the will of God, they are in opposition. The Lord asks, commands and empowers us to go into the worst of situations into the desert, into the wilderness, even where there are no resources, to go and teach revival and evangelism, to make disciples in a place of unbelief, in a desert of desolation and despair. He calls us to do the impossible. Praise God. Until we have to do it. Until we have to go be light and darkness. Where we have to go be understanding and reason where there is none. To go be peace where there is war. To go be wisdom and knowledge where there is hostility and violence. The wilderness. A place unbecoming, unfriendly, inhospitable to the truth. And God calls me to make no differentials from anybody. LGBTQ and otherwise. God calls me, go there in the midst of that desolation and unbelief and compromise. Go there and win souls. Go there and speak truth. Go there and show them who I am. I've shown you. I've raised you. I brought you out. I called you out from the dead for this reason that we would believe like this, like this, this higher way this deeper way of, of believing and reaching and coming and immediately, Mark 9, 24, immediately the father of the boy 
cried out with a desperate, piercing cry, saying, I do believe, I do, Lord. I believe you came. I believe you gave your son Jesus. I believe that you sent me into the wilderness and that you will be with me. We believe it, Lord. We set ourselves to that, to that stage, Lord, to prepare the way. We believe, Lord, but we believe many times according to what we see. We ask for rain and we leave without an umbrella. Think about that. Am I believing in what I've asked? Am I believing in the power, the admonition, and the virtue to fall upon me from a living God who commands his people to carry their cross, to live a life of sacrifice, to live a life of endeavoring, to do the will of God, not just to do it, but to take delight in his command, to delight in the command of the living God, to bring love where there is none, to bring hope where there is none, to bring forgiveness and grace where there is none. The desert, the inhospitality of man and his so-called humanity hates us. We're weird, we're out of touch and disconnected because we believe in perfect love. We don't do away with filial love or our love, but our agape love is the conclusion. We believe that, we stand on that, and that makes us weird. That makes us unwelcome sometimes. Amen? How can I do this, Lord? How can I serve in a place where I'm unwelcome, where my beliefs and the sanctity of my faith is cast out, compromised, reflected upon personally by people who do not believe? How can I do this, Lord? Let me switch most now for you. How did I do it in you? There's your map. Each of us were in a place of rebellion at one time or another in our lives. Did God not come and by the power of his might and of his name change us, reform us, transform us even in the throes of rebellion and sin and discord? Didn't he come in and make a habitation for himself right here? Amen. With all your problems and with all your trial and with all your travail and with all your rebellion, didn't he come in, save us, set us upon a rock, and call us his own. Everyone here had to be brought out of death. Everyone here had to be washed in the precious blood of Christ. Everyone here. What's the difference? You and I were the wilderness at one time. We were foreign from God. This wasn't something we wanted. This wasn't something that we desired. But now, now that we have seen, now that we have come, now that we know, my God is real. His promises are real. The heaven that waits for me, I can call my place of origin. Heaven itself that God has created is my home. It's where I belong. It's where you belong. Do we realize that today? Do we live as if we were from heaven itself? If we receive Christ, Christ lives in us. Tell you a little story. I was ministering with these two men. I was in partnership with these two men. At a mission, at a mission rescue house for men who are missing and going through the struggles of addiction and depression. And well, you know, you know what we do. And this man, I find him to be annoying, much as many of you find me. <laughs> he was annoying, he was loud, and he was bad, bad, bad. This man, this guy wanted to get out of there. Steve remembers, he was there with me. I didn't hear anything that he said, but I did hear one thing, and it changed my life. I didn't like this man, I didn't agree with anything that he said, but he said one thing that I never forgot. He was asking this, and he was asking that. It was like George asking me questions just to set me up for failure. <laughs> you know, just to show me what I didn't know, so that he could teach me, and I wasn't hearing him. But I tell you what, it stayed with me like a splinter in my mind. It stayed with me, it haunted me. I resisted it, I refused it, much as the desert does the way of God. The one he calls us to make a way for it, the very one. This man said, we're called to be more than that. We're called to be Jesus himself. 
Jesus himself, the man, the Savior, the Lord, the Messiah, Jesus said, you will do greater things. That's what he said. That's what he said. I'm more like Peter. Stepping out of the boat, dance on the waves until things start to get a little, a little shake. Amen. And oh Lord, please, God, save me. Oh, you're a little faith. How long will I put up with you? How long will I teach you? Lord, as long as it took. Because here I am. Living to delight the work of man. Living to create the way of the Lord. To create the kingdom of God right here. Isn't that what he did with us? There was a barren and unfruitful place in each of us. Some of us there still is. Rebuke it in Jesus' name and be done with it. Get out of here, Satan. Get out of here, discord. Get out of here, dog. Get out of here, unbelief. This man says, Lord, I believe, but help me believe. I'm saved. I've come to Christ. All my house is full, but that is not what God has called me to do. Not that alone. Not that alone. He's called me to make a way where it's not pleasant. Anybody can minister in a church, but minister in a prison. Minister in a place that is unhospitable. Minister in the street with people who don't want to hear it, who say they believe just because they want to use you. Just because they want what you're giving, just because they, they can take something from you. Let's see you minister with a whole heart to people who could never deserve it and who may never come to God. That's not your call. That's not my call. Mine is to do the will of God and do it with a soul in my heart and a dance in my foot. That's the command. That's what he's charged me with. With the impossible. Didn't he do it with us? Isn't he still doing it now? Did he not say, I will perfect the work in you that I have begun until it is finished? Is it any different for them? Probably. But that's not my call. That's not my call. That's not your call. I had one of these homeless people that, that come here that we minister to say something about one of my members. Our members, my family. Our family, our beloved. By no means are we perfect. But this person said that one of my people said, he said, oh, okay, sister. He referred to her as sister and she walked away saying, you're not my brother and I'm not your sister. He said, that's what she said. And he was up and he was mad. He was rapping. He was rapping. I just listened to him. And when he took a breath, I said, are you finished? He said, yeah, man. What are you going to say about that? I said, are you surprised that people are disgusting with you? Are you surprised? Your own family has turned you out and won't have anything to do with you. Are you surprised? You expect from her, would you never give yourself? I say, Who's my family? Who does the will of God regardless of how they feel about someone? Who endeavors to be the, the love of, to the, of the living God and put yourself aside? To do it, to live it, to believe it, to delight in the command of the Lord. Because I tell you what, you know what it comes with? You know what that comes with? It comes with the fulfillment and the desire of your heart. That's what it comes with. We don't carry a cross for nothing. We don't do this work for nothing. We do this because God himself is our delight and he is our portion. We are in love with God. Look at what he's done for me. And I, if I could, would take what the Lord has given me and put in me and put into everybody that I need. How do I do that? Let me tell you. I don't know. But that's what the Holy Spirit is for. For when I can't. For when I don't know. This man asked for faith and belief higher than what he already had. Folks, if we're going to go higher, if we're going to go deeper, if we're going to go wider, we need a higher faith. We need a deeper conviction. We have to ask for it. He said, I believe. I do. But I need more. I need more. Another touch, another word, another challenge, another endeavor, another path. Lord, we need more. We believe, we're here, we believe. But to do the impossible, to win a place like this, 
We're going to need the power of the living God to do it. We're going to have to stand on the promises when there's no place to stand. When there's no welcoming committee. There's no church and no air conditioning and no food. Can we do it then? Because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where we are defined. Not in the good times, but in the tough times. In the muck and the yuck when we're bruised, when we're battered and we're bewildered. That's where out of this world wrestling takes place. When we end and he begins. My weakness will lead me to the strength of God. If I believe. If I say, Lord, let me believe beyond my weaknesses. Let me believe beyond my doubt. So that I can build your kingdom right here. Right here. Right there. In Samaria and Judea and all of the world. The impossible. God has set us to it. God has said it to it. Will you answer? Will you answer when he says, What I have done in you, I can do in the world around you. Will you delight in that command? Will you desire it with me? Because I know your heart. I know who really wants me. And I know who's playing around with me. God knows your heart. He created you. He formed you. He's working in you everything to his good. Let him have his way. Let him have his way today so you can go into the wilderness, into the fire, into the muck, into the yuck, and come out with a multitude of people who believe because of what God has done in you and what he's doing in you right now. Speaking his will and his purpose and his desire for your life. Have you set you, have you made up your mind? There's nothing else for me, Lord. There's nothing else for me. Just what you have. It's crunch time in case you haven't noticed. All the evil we see in the world. Take a look at the opposite. You will see human beings at their very best. Doing all the things God calls us to do. Focus and join their number. We can do this. We can create belief, hope, and faith. Even a house on a hill in a place where there is none. There's no place we can't go. There's no revival. There's no evangelism. And no place where we can't do it. In urban ministry, we know St. George's class. He said, no matter the economy, no matter the oppression, no matter the political situation or the economic situation, no matter what, Jesus came in a place and time of absolute turmoil. The promised land was occupied by Roman Empire and they ruled with an iron fist. And Jesus, born in a manger, and the frailty of this baby, of this man, he came with the gospel, and he changed the world. He came in the worst of times, the absolute worst of times. He came and he changed it forever. He drove men mad with his love and with his grace and with his plan and with his word. Have you gone crazy for God today? Are you a madman for him? They say that God, he's a wild man. You're a I am. This is my desire. This is the command of the living God. And it is my desire in loving obedience to see everyone who comes saved, sanctified, pressed down and running over. If this is alive and real in me, then I have the admonition and the virtue to give it, to pass it, to teach it, to feel it. And so do you. Do you believe it? Do you receive it? Can you step outside yourself? Think outside the box and do so quickly. Say, Lord, you did this in me already. You did it in my father and my grandfather and my grandmother. And to the third and fourth generation, Lord, I see you do me into my children, hallelujah. And my grandbabies, I see it, I smell it, I taste it, and I want more. Give me more faith, Lord. Give me more belief, Lord. So that the world can see who you are. 
and be astonished and amazed, filled with awe and wonder before a living, mighty, awesome, powerful God. The impossible in what you call for is not for the squeamish or the faint of heart, it's for the <laughs> of a Christian, a raw high Christian, one who doesn't back down to challenge. They challenge our sacred norms. They challenge the things we revere, how we came to be, the sanctity of what God has given to us. They challenge it. Let them challenge it. I don't worry about where I go with the gospel. It's them who should worry. God said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you wherever you go. And when the waters rise, I'm with you. When the fires burn, I'm with you. When the lions want to bite, I'm with you. I won't leave you. I will never leave your side. Don't leave me. Don't walk away from me. Quench time. Dig in your feet. Gird your loins and shod your feet. Put on the armor and get ready for spiritual warfare. Claim blessing and favor over your house. Y'all know Michael Petty, right? Anybody here remember Michael Petty? I remember Michael Petty. This weekend he called me for a little favor. And he calls me up yelling at me. I prophesy over you, brother, in all your house. You walk with conviction. You walk with anointing. You walk with the spirit of love and obedience. And your house is going to follow. Your congregation is going to follow. If you weren't praying two weeks before VBS, you don't realize what's at stake here. You don't realize that every encounter comes to this door. Is one that we cannot waste. Because we never know with a good ground might sprout up. The Bible says don't sow seed on bad ground. It's hard to tell where that ground is because every one of us could make the argument that one day, some time ago, we were not good ground. And while we were in enmity with God, He saved us and He loved us. It's a slippery slope. We have to let God decide. I don't want to enable these people who are homeless. There's too much food, too much clothes, too much friendship, without ever realizing that they need a living, loving relationship with their Savior. If I'm giving them food, and I'm giving them clothes, and I'm giving them love, and I'm giving them friendship and affirmation, it's for nothing if I have not given them the good news of the gospel. We have a slew of deserts every Tuesday in our fellowship. Barren, unfruitful ground that is sick and full of lepers. We are real, and then we go. I challenge you, Kirsch. I challenge you, Christians. If you're there, take the time to sit across from one of my tongue. Jesus loves you. He died for you. And it doesn't have to be this way. Let what we do here be a reminder that there is a place for you at the table of God. What some people call scraps from the master's table to a dog, I call tender riddles from the master's mouth to mine. With a pet and a kiss. And it won't be last. Remember what I said. What some people call scraps from the table for a dog's mouth, I call tender riddles from the living God's mouth to mine and to yours. Make the most of what God has given us today. And if they are scraps from the master's table, they are food from his mouth to mine. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Take this with you today. Challenge yourself. Lord, help me come out of myself. Lord, refine me in the flows of this challenge. To be more than I thought I could. To go further than I thought I could. To ask, Lord, help me believe more, deeper, stronger, because only you can do it. Only you can do it. You know where failure comes from? VBS failure, revival failure, motorcycle ministry failure, you know where it comes from? The people's inability to appreciate that prayer, supplication, meditation, and worship, way before the fact, way before we get there, God bless Kay's heart for giving me that little thing. But let me tell you something. I was all over it like a pit bull to a kitty cat. 
way before that little day came up. I said, Lord, every encounter we have is one we may not get again. Lord, help me, help us make the most of every single encounter. Lord, God, Messiah, Savior, King, my everything, if they see what you have done in me, we win the game. If they see what you've done in us, what was barren, broken, unfruitful, and lost is now found, filled, holy, and righteous before God. You and me. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? I pray that you do. That's all I have today. Lord bless you.
true earnest, there is indeed power in prayer. And I must say, you're going to be a hard act to follow the next week when I have to preach. Please stand. Thank you, Daniel, for that inspiring sermon.